Today, I will show you how to connect a microcontroller to the UM980 or UM982 satellite module so we can send RTCM correction data without the need for a PC. For the microcontroller, we will be using an ESP32 and we will be using a free open source software to build the NTRIP server to send the correction data to a rover for precise positioning or if you want to, to sell the correction data in exchange for cryptocurrency turning our base station here into a crypto miner. All right, so for the setup, in addition to the satellite module, I have discussed in my previous videos, we need an ESP32 microcontroller and preferably you get one of the microcontrollers with the external antenna for better Wi-Fi connectivity. And you also will need a couple of uh, DuPont wires and of course the satellite module. However, for this video, I will be using a microcontroller with an integrated PCB antenna, but the pin connections are exactly the same than the one which is in the description with the external antenna, so the connections will be exactly the same. All right, so let's first flash the XP firmware onto the ESP, and this is available on GitHub. Again, a link will be in the description, but all you have to do is follow the instructions for firmware upgrade. So if you click on here, you can see there is a couple of files you have to download, and also there is a flash tool which you have to download. So if you click on here, you can then click on all of those binary files here, which are the ones you need. You don't need to download the zip files or the other file types. So clicking on here, you can then save them to some convenient spot on your computer. I already have done so, so I will not do that now. So let me just cancel out of here and go back. And then you also have to download the the flash tool, which again, you simply click on here and you download it to a convenient location on your computer. And then you have to connect the ESP via USB and simply run the executable here, which should open up two windows, one black one, one white one. And you have to select the ESP here and press OK, and then your window will be blank. There will be no files in yet, so you have to actually click those little triple dots here to navigate to the correct files on your computer. But what you have to do, you have to put them in, in exactly the right order, and you also have to provide the memory address on the microcontroller where those individual files are being saved to. So pause this video and then copy down this information into your flash tool. And then, of course, we have to select the COM port. In my case, the ESP is connected to COM port 8, and with that, you can then start to flash. And what you then should see, you should see that uh, the flash tool is now trying to connect to your microcontroller. However, in order for this to be successful, you actually have to press the boot button, and then you will hopefully see that now your flash tool has started to flash the new firmware onto the microcontroller. And of course, this will take a little while, so let's just speed up this video until this is done. All right, and then when the flash has completed, what you have to do is you have to restart the ESP, and I will do that by simply disconnecting the USB cable and reconnecting it. And with that, we should be able then to go into our Wi-Fi settings, and after some time, hopefully the new XP will pop up here with some random number which gets generated and you can change those once you connect to it. So let's connect. And also get rid of all of that. And then you can just go into any browser and the IP address you need to enter is the 192.168.4.1 for any XP device. And then you, you come to this landing page here where you can now change the name of your device. I will just give this a number two because I already have one installed. And you also can connect to your home Wi-Fi network by scanning for available Wi-Fi networks. So I will use my home network here. And of course, you have to provide a password. And in addition to your Wi-Fi credentials, you also probably want to put a security passwords right here and right here, so you don't leave a door open for somebody to potentially hack into your network. But uh, for me, I will leave those open for right now. And we can then simply 
click Submit. And then since we now have changed the SSID here, we also have to actually reconnect to the Wi-Fi hotspot of the device before we click Reload. So we have to go into here again, open our Wi-Fi settings, and you can see now we have the new name here, and we connect. And then I should be able to simply reload this page here. Here we go. And you now can see we have the new name and also a IP address has been assigned for the home network. So it's probably a good idea to make this IP address a static IP on your router so it doesn't change on you, but you will have to look this up for your router since this is different for each router. In any case, I can then simply click on here and now I can connect to my XP device through my home network and I no longer have to hook up to the Wi-Fi hotspot. All right, so everything looks good. So we can then actually start setting up our hardware. All right, so here then again is the schematics on how to connect the satellite module to the ESP. This little uh, LED network here is optional, but it's quite nice to have because it shows you communication flow in and out of those two devices and it's quite useful for troubleshooting. So one thing you have to make sure is that you hook up your LEDs here to the 3.3 volt output on the ESP because the UART communication actually is high if it is inactive. So if you have communication, this one will be pulled low and your LEDs will light up. And also, if you're not familiar with UART, you have to make sure that you connect the TX pin, which is the transmit pin, to the receive pin on the ESP. And similarly, the TX pin, the transmit pin of the ESP, to the receive pin on the satellite module. And then lastly, make sure you connect all your connections here to the second row because this is the second COM port on this device and this will become important later on. So here then is my setup. I have connected the yellow pin to the receive side of the ESP and the blue cable is the transmitter. We also have a ground and a 5 volt power from the satellite module. And of course I now have connected the USB to the satellite module, not to the, the ESP directly anymore. So make sure you only connect one USB, because otherwise you, you power both sides, and this may get you into trouble. And also, the, the yellow LED is the receive LED, and the blue LED is the transmit LED. All right, so let's then configure the UM982 module, which I'm using today. But as I have pointed out in my previous videos, you really should use the UM890 module for setting up a base station. But the steps will be uh, very similar, just one difference, which I will be pointing out when we get there. So again, if you have not watched my previous videos on how to use the Uprecise software and, to, and how to set up those modules, now would be a good time. So let's get started. We have to open the Uprecise software, and we have to connect to our module, which in my case is COM4 this time. And then you will see right here that we have the UM980 module connected. And uh, nothing is going on just yet. There is no signal on the LED. And also, there is no data which is uh, received. So let me just clean this window here. But as always, the first thing you should do, you should send a factory reset command in case you have done any funny business before. And make sure you get the acknowledge command here. And then if you have the UM980 module, you should configure your signals group. And the best signal group to use here is number two. However, since I'm not using the 980, but the 982 command, I actually have to provide two signal groups because I have the dual antenna version. And the best combination there is the three and six combination. And then again, you can just send it and you should get the acknowledge command here and as I've pointed out before, the signal group command will actually reset your device. So you have to wait for it to come back online. But then once you get the acknowledge command here, you're ready to, to continue uh, setting up your module. All right, then the next command I want to send is the command that sets the module into the base station mode. So we can send that. Hopefully, again, we're getting an OK acknowledge here. And then we can start sending the RTCM correction data. But since we have connected our ESP to the COM port 2, we also need to actually tell the module that the RTCM correction data needs to be sent to COM 2. So the first one here is the location of our 
base station. And since the base station hopefully will not move very much, we can do this every 30 seconds. By the way, a list of all the, the commands will be in the description. And again, you should get an OK. And the next command I want to send is the 1033 command. Again, we want the data to be sent to COM port 2 every 30 seconds. And this is essentially the, the antenna and receiver configuration, which again, shouldn't change very much. So every 30 seconds is OK. And then the first data stream, which actually concerns the correction data, is the 1077 command, which is the correction data for the GPS constellation. We want to send those every second. And you now also can see that the yellow LED started to flash because now we're receiving data every second through the second COM port. We also want to get the European satellites every second. We can get the Russian satellites, the Indian satellites, if you are in a region where this constellation is visible. And lastly, the Chinese constellation, which actually is the, the largest constellation. So you definitely want to use this one here. All right, so with that, we then can actually also request the location of our station via a NEMA sentence. And in this case, I actually want it now sent to the USB port, which is on COM port 1. So I do not have to specify the COM port here. And as soon as I do that, you can now see that now we're getting data back every second. And then also the number of satellites. You can put us in here, and now you can see your constellation. So the last two commands I sent there, technically not necessary for a base station, but it is kind of satisfying to see that everything is working good and you have a good number of satellites visible in the sky. All right, so with that, we are ready to configure our XP firmware to actually send data first to RTK to go to test if everything works all right. And then uh, if you want to, you can also send it to one of the decentralized physical infrastructure networks in exchange for cryptocurrency. So let me bring back the browser window here. And you have to scroll down to Entrip server, enable the Entrip server. And I already have done that. But what you have to put in here is the host, which is rtk2go.com. The port is 2101, which is the default port. And then you have to provide the name of the base station you have specified when you set up an RTK to go account, which of course you, you have to do. And it's pretty straightforward. So there are other videos you can find on how, how to do that. You have to provide your username and of course your password. And then if you click submit, you will see that we are now streaming data to RTK to go. So we can then go to RTK to go and search for our base station, RTK base station right here. And you can see uh, RTK to go is receiving data. You also can see after some time all the different RTCM correction streams you are sending. And if you click on here, see in Google Map, you should be able to see your base station here. All right, so with that, you have confirmed that everything is working right and you can start sending your data to Onokoi or RTK direct for uh, in exchange for cryptocurrency. So let me just show you my setup. As you can see, this one here is the duo version of the XP, which allows you to send correction data to two entry casters at the same time. But since this video is getting quite long, this will have to be a separate video on how to set it up. So if I remember, I will put an end screen onto this video once I have uploaded that. In any case, it's all quite similar, except that now you have two Entrip servers, an A and a B. And here I'm sending my data to Onokoi, where the host name is servers.onokoi.com. You have the same port name, and then you have to provide the mount point name, which you will be assigned once you sign up with, with Onokoi. And for some reason, actually, I only got it to work if the username I used the mount point name as well. And of course, you have to provide the password here. And then in my case, I don't really feel comfortable streaming data to RTK direct. Somehow the website looks a little sketchy to me. 
but I'm sending my correction data to RTK to go as well so I can actually use it myself. All right, so if you then actually go to Onokoi, you can see here is my account with my base station. Then you can see the quality of the data stream, which obviously determines how much rewards you ultimately get. You can see the different satellites and the bands of the satellites you're sending. And if you click here on live feed, you will also see your, your satellite constellation similar to what you had on Uprecise. Okay, that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye.